Hello everyone and welcome to the foundation paper piecing mini class. The pattern that I picked today is a simple pattern that you could do by hand, uh, but I wanted to show you a couple little things that you may find as you're encountering foundation paper piecing patterns. When you print this out, please make sure that you print it actual size and most patterns will have a scale box so that when this pattern is printed correctly, this will measure one inch. So that's just a really good check for you. The other reason that I picked this is because this is numbered one. There are two twos, a three, and two fours. And basically what this means is that these can be sewn in any order. However, you really wanna make sure that you get your seams being consistent. So I've added an A to the right side and a B to the left side. So I will sew the A piece first, then the B, and then I'll sew the A piece first and then the B. Whenever you cut foundation paper piecing patterns, usually, and I'm not sure if the camera is picking this up, but there is a very faint perforated line here. That is your seam allowance. So you wanna make sure you cut to your seam allowance. However, if it doesn't have it, you can simply add it yourself by adding a quarter of an inch onto the outer edge of each of your sew lines. Another tool that I use whenever I am foundation paper piecing is an index card. I find that this for my paper gives some additional stability. And um, I will show you how to use this index card in a moment. Speaking of paper, you can use regular copy paper I like, however, newspaper print. This can also be purchased in eight and a half by 11 sheets as a ream, it's relatively inexpensive and it is um, a little thinner. It is very easy to print on, it doesn't get jammed up in your printer and it makes it super simple to remove later. There are um, a couple other tools that I'd like to show you before we get started. Obviously a cutting mat, I have a large cutting mat that I use on my surface, and then I have a rotating cutting mat that I use primarily to cut on. I have a collection of OmniGrid rulers, uh, which I use interchangeably for lots and lots of things. <clears throat> One complaint that I hear all the time is OmniGrid rulers slip around. They're intentionally slippery so that they don't rub on your fabric, but if you find that you need a little grip, take a little piece of medical tape I don't know if you can see it here. It is clear, obviously, and it just has little grippies and that'll help snug it up with whatever your surface is. A rotary cutter, of course. And I have uh, two other tools that are absolutely indispensable, I think, generally in quilting, but certainly with foundation paper piecing. This is an add a quarter ruler and this is an add an eighth ruler. For those of you that are sewing along with me and Dear Jane, I use the add an eighth. What this does is it'll add an eighth of an inch to whatever it is I'm cutting. These do, by the way, this is a six inch length. They also come in 12s if you so desire. And this is the add a quarter. And you can see here that it has a little lip on it so that whenever you bump it up against whatever you're bumping it up against, let's say for example, you were bumping it to the index card, you can then rotary cut right along here and you will have a perfect one quarter inch added to you automatically. That is really indispensable. Another thing that I highly recommend, and you'll be seeing me use this later, is a wool pressing mat. This is absolutely one of my favorites. It is significantly thick and you can lay it on any surface to protect it. So if you have a table or a desk or whatever it is you're using to press on, this wool pressing mat is fantastic. It is significantly firm, but it has just a tiny bit of give to it. And for pressing, it really is wonderful. Now, as far as pressing, particularly if you're doing small pieced items like in foundation paper piecing and iron just seems to be a little overkill. So I do recommend a craft iron. I have uh, this clover here, which is fantastic. You can see the head on it is very slim. So this would not be good for flat pressing a block once it's completed, but it is real handy to take along with you when you are um, fabric paper piecing small. My preferred for quilt blocking is my little Oloso. 
and also makes an absolutely amazing iron and this is uh, their craft size you can steam it although i don't use it but it is super heavy which is fantastic for pressing blocks and it also gets smoking hot really quick uh, and it does have an auto cutoff it is called their mini project iron and i have the links to all of this stuff in my uh, pdf and also on my website for products that i use there's one other thing that I need to talk to you guys about as far as getting yourself set up is your sewing machine. You want to change your stitch length to a little lower. My baby lock defaults for regular stitching to 2.5 and I lower that to 1.6. Um, you want to do that so that the stitching is just a little tighter which is critical whenever you're piecing small pieces and you want to keep them together but it also helps perforate the paper that you're going to be sewing through which is going to make that significantly easier to remove i do not use a locking stitch because i stitch a little before and a little after so i have found that a locking stitch is not necessary okay so we're ready to get started you actually don't even need to be this precise for this particular area because you're going to go back and trim this at some point later. So even if you just wanted to take scissors and do a rough cut and say you're not cutting it exactly on the line, that's fine too because you are going to come back and trim this later. So I am just going to take the scissors here and real roughly cut it just so that you can see how that's done. Um, you don't want to spend a long period of time cutting patterns out. You want to spend a long time sewing. So now that I have this rough cut, I see that I'm going to need two large triangle pieces and four um, also triangle pieces, but they are going to be smaller. I am just using fabric scraps. I'm not necessarily cutting these in triangles. What I am doing, though, is placing it over the pattern and making sure that the piece that I plan to use is large enough that it will cover all the areas that need to be covered. I'm not worried about what the excess is because we will trim this off. I just want to make sure that I have pieces that are going to be large enough that are going to cover the piece that I need to make, which is my one here, and also have enough to cover for the seam allowances. So I have two of these and four of these. And again, these are just fabric scraps, so I'm not worried about this at all. Now this one piece here may just be a teeny tiny bit less than, since I rough cut it, it looks like it may actually be exact, but I'm not gonna worry about that if it's just a little bit less because it's gonna be incorporated in that seam allowance. It is better to err on the side of extra than less, but in this particular case, since I'm using scraps, it's gonna be fine. So to start the foundation paper piecing process, what I actually do is I will take my index card and I will make a fold on the first line that I am going to sew. This helps me keep it straight in my mind where it's gonna be sewing because we actually have to place our fabric on the back and our pattern is from the front and we're gonna be sewing on the front. So the first line that I'm going to be sewing is where one and two join each other. And since I decided that I was going to do A first, I'm working on this side. So I'm taking my index card and I'm basically lining it up just barely below the sewing line so that as the paper folds over the index card, it will give me a fold on the line. And again, it's not critical that this is absolutely exact, but you want a roundabout. So now I have a fold here, and as I turn this over, it's really easy for me to recognize which direction I'm going, and I know that I'm going in this direction. So your first piece of fabric for foundation paper piecing needs to actually be placed right side up. And that's a little confusing oftentimes to people that are getting started. <clears throat> so what I do is I like to take a flathead pin and I'm lining it up here at my bottom, which is pretty close to my seam allowance. I'm looking here and I'm gonna have plenty holding my finger where that seam allowance would be, so I'm not worried about that at all. 
And I'm taking my flathead pin and I'm gonna just stick a little pin in through the paper and the fabric just to hold it because this has not been sewn. So of course it's gonna be squirreling around. But I also do not want the pin in the way from my presser foot as it's coming down through here. So then I'm going to turn this over and just again, make sure that I don't have any riffles in it and that it is laying perfectly flat. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna trim the excess so that I have an area that I can lay my next piece. So I'm pulling out my index card again. I'm folding it over just where I folded it before. And this of course is my sew line. So I need to add a quarter of an inch there for the ruler. I'm gonna take that out and bump it. And that little slot that it has here bumps really nicely. You can do this without the index card, but I find that the index card gives it a little more stability. And then I'm going to simply take my rotary cutter and just trim this little piece off. So now with my one piece here, and I'm not worried about the side because I'm not working on it, I have a perfect line here that's going to match up to my seam allowance, and I'm ready to put my second piece on. So I'm going to use a little larger of a piece. Again, I know that I want it to go in this direction. And so just as a double check for myself, I would put right sides together. In this particular instance, there's not a right or a wrong side, but I would put right sides together. And if you want to just finger pin it and make sure that your thinking is correct and that it's gonna go in the direction that you want it to go. And I line it up like this. Now you can stick a pin in both of these if you want. Um, the first pieces that you sew, because they are actually not sewn together, do get a little squirrely. So you can pin it. And again, I'm pinning from the top because I'm gonna be sewing from the top. So I don't want to worry with that pin on the bottom. However, you probably with a flathead pin could pin on the bottom and it would be fine, but I just don't wanna fool with it. So we are now going to go over to the sewing machine and sew this. I'm gonna zoom in here just real quick because I wanna show you where I'm actually going to sew. I will be starting uh, using my seam wrapper here, here at this point, and I will be sewing to this point. Now, if you remember at the beginning of the video, I said that I was not gonna be using a locking stitch. So what I'm gonna do is actually start one or two stitches behind and go one or two stitches over. And this will be fine whenever you put your paper over to actually sew, you'll just perf that away from the paper a little bit. But because of the stitches actually intersect, they're making a locking stitch for you. So let's go on to the sewing machine. So you see that I'm actually not using a quilter foot or a um, all-purpose foot. I'm using something called a clear foot or a clear zigzag foot. It's got a nice open space in between, but more importantly, it's clear. That's so I can easily follow the line. Most people would use this quarter inch foot and that's fine, except I found that it obstructs my ability to see the line and so my goal here with foundation paper piecing is to sew on the line, so I wanna make sure that I can see the line really clearly. So I have my fabric matched up here on the edges that we cut previously. I know that I'm sewing between one and two, so I'll be starting just a little here and sewing off to the paper. So I'm just going to position this and drop the needle down so that I'm comfortable that I am in the right direction. Again, I'm starting just a little bit. And my machine did a locking stitch, sorry, because it defaults to that automatically when I turn it on. But it is not necessary. So slow if you're a little nervous about it and increase the speed. And again, I'm coming just a needle or two off. Of where the sewing line is. 
So if you can see this, I started just one or two stitches before and I ended one or two stitches after. So the pin is no longer necessary because the paper is actually sewn to the fabric. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this and press it. Okay, we are here with the iron. So I'm just gonna give it a quick little press first to set the seam. And then taking my finger, I'm just gonna open it up just a little bit and also do a press. Even though we're using an iron, you don't actually want to iron and stretch the fabric. You simply want to do a press. And now we're ready for the next step. And again, I'm not worried about this excess that's over here. We're going to cut this and trim this off when we go into our next position. And we're ready to get that started. Okay, so now that we have gotten 2A sewn in, we are going to move on to 2B. So again, our technique is going to be exactly the same. I'm going to take my index card. I'm going to line it up just barely under the seam line so that when I fold my paper over, it'll be in the middle. The little stitch or two that I sewed over just kind of pulled away from the paper a little bit, and that's fine. That's going to serve as our locking stitch. Now remember when we trim this, we need that seam allowance. So I'm using my add a quarter here to the index card and I'm just gonna cut away the excess. Now this is gonna give me a perfect piece that I know I'm cutting, I am sewing here. So I'm taking my scrap piece of fabric and just lining it up and doing a little finger pin to make sure that I understand which direction it's going. I'm going to line this up edge to edge. And again, you can put a pin in it if you like. I usually don't. So I'm just gonna sew it using the same technique that I did before. I'm gonna start a stitch or two before and end a stitch or two after my sew line. Okay, so the sewing and the pressing is completed and you see that I have a really nice looking triangle here with a little bit of extra fluff. It's fine, we're gonna get rid of that here in a moment. So now that we have one and two sewn, our next piece is we're gonna be adding triangle number three. And so that's gonna be this line here, which is right down the middle. We're gonna be doing the same exact technique as before. We'll put in our index card in, folding it over. You see I have a little pull in here, which is fine because I sewed just a couple stitches over. I'm gonna pull in my add a quarter, bump it up here and I'm, Put in a little pressure with it here on my fingers. I don't know if you can tell that. I'm kind of pulling it back just to make sure that it stays firm and secure. Running my rotary cutter to get rid of the excess. And you see now I have a nice pretty seam allowance that I am going to then line this up with. And again, you can pin it if it makes you more comfortable. Just make sure when you're placing your pin, if you can use a flathead pin like this, as opposed to something with a head like this, that you do um, that and you don't want to put it terribly near where you're going to be sewing so that it doesn't get hung up underneath your presser foot. So you would put it down in this area. I typically don't use pins. I don't really have a problem other than that first piece with the fabric skating around on me. So I'm just going to sew this just like this. Okay, we've got this sewn and we've got this pressed. Now it's not, um, how do I wanna say? You wanna sew on the line as much as you possibly can. If you get a little off the line, it's not that big of a deal with the exception of a point. So just be very careful and slow down when you get to the center section because this is what's gonna give you your fantastic point. So you really wanna make sure that you're not sucking down into it. If you happen to sew a little too far this way, you can usually come back and put another line of stitching in it just here and it's perfectly fine. But I wanna show you that really pretty point. And again, that was achieved by sewing exactly on that line and being conscious of where that intersection is. So now we're doing our same thing so that my seams lay as flat as possible. Again, I'm gonna work on my side A first before my side B. And again, the technique is exactly the same. We're gonna do index card and fold. 
trim off the excess with our ruler. And we know we're sewing this piece. It would be right sides together if that would matter based on the fabric that you're using. Doing just a quick fold here so I know I need to line it up on this edge with this piece or I'm not gonna have enough to come over. Do you see how finger pinning helped me determine that? Because again, this is just a scrap piece. And so I know that this is the area that I wanna sew in. Okay, part two is actually done. Again, I'm not gonna worry about all of this because we're gonna go back and trim this up later, but I'm moving on to the last piece, which is gonna be my B. <clears throat> Same procedure, folding it over, trimming off the excess. And this was the piece that I was a little nervous about saying that it may be just be a little tiny little. So when I do a fold over here, it looks like it's gonna be exact. But just to have a little extra, I am going to shimmy this down a little tiny bit. So you'll see here that I can see a little of my red instead of it exactly lining up, or I guess it's probably pink. So when that folds over, it should give me just a tiny little bit of extra. So I'm gonna hold that in that position and take it and sew it. Okay, we're back to finish our trimming. I've got this piece here, and again, you see that it's just a little short on each of the sides, but this is rough cuts, so it's probably not gonna be as bad as it looks once we get the block trimmed down. But even still, because this is less than an eighth of an inch off, it's gonna be fine with um, being buried in the seam allowance whenever I connect the next block. Now, to trim the block, you should always trim based on your seam line. And so what I mean by that is even though that this is a guideline here to cut, I don't ever trim by this. I wanna really make sure that it's my seam line that I'm adding that quarter of an inch. So even though this is a four and a half inch block, this is a four and a half inch ruler, I like to have a little extra. So I'm using just a slightly bigger ruler and again, I'm gonna turn it so that I don't have all of the markings so that it's a consistent line. And this quarter inch line here is what I'm actually going to be lining up exactly on my seam line. And then that way I'm sure that I have a quarter inch from my seam and not from where I think that it's paper cut. And I'm cutting fabric and paper both which is fine because we just rough cut it. I'm lining it up again, holding it down, cutting off the excess. And I could be rotating the mat, but so that I don't get off centered for the camera, I'm actually not doing that. I'm just rotating the piece. But that makes it nice for rotating the mat. I am adding a little extra pressure just because I have all this fabric underneath here so to make sure that my ruler doesn't go anywhere. As I'm cutting against it. So let's remove our scrap and look. So that piece that we were worried about, you see here, it's just a little tiny bit, so it's gonna be perfectly fine. But more importantly, I wanna show you guys the points that we were able to achieve through foundation paper piecing. So I'm gonna give this another real quick press. And that's where the Oloso iron is really handy to have. It's not so big that you can't press your seams in between the sewing, but it's big enough that it'll make you a nice flat block. So as we turn over here, you can see that it has been well perforated from the sewing machine needle, of course. And I'm just going to systematically tear the paper out. Now this was actual copy paper that I used for this piece just because I wanted to show you guys how to do it. 
and you see that it is tearing apart fine. So if that's all that you have available, that's fine. I, however, really prefer that newspaper print and it tears even easier than that. And by marking our seams, the A's and the B's and doing those, you see here on the block, we have nice flat seams and things not going wonky all over the place. So I would call this definitely a foundation paper piece in success. I don't know about you, but this is one of the reasons that I love foundation paper piecing because I am always afraid that I'm not gonna get my points exactly the way that they should be. Even though I know that there are techniques for that, it is going to um, be significantly easier with foundation paper piecing. So hopefully you've enjoyed this class. And as always, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask.